Hello everybody, my name is Bear. Welcome back to the Indie Spotlight in this week's edition. We are playing Sunless Sea. It's a game by Fail Better Games. It's pretty tough to actually describe what this one is. And uh, by the way, before I even get into this, I should mention that this will be a YouTube exclusive one as uh, Twitch was giving us some issues as we were trying to do the live version of the Indie Spotlight as we typically do. So uh, YouTube exclusive for those of you that like to catch it on here. Anyway. Game by Fail Better Games, uh, it's available on Steam right now under Early Access, so keep in mind that this is an Early Access form of the game, it still is in t technical beta, but it is a very playable state at the moment, and you'll I haven't really run into many issues yet, so I'm going to go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt as far as that's concerned. Let's go ahead and start up a new game here, and I'll give you guys the, uh, the gist of things as we're waiting for loading screens to go through. I should mention that this art style here, uh, this is pretty similar to what you'll see, as a lot of this is a text-based kind of adventure, and uh, that it takes advantage of that by way of presenting you with very beautiful, detailed art that I can really appreciate quite well, as uh, it uh, sets, the, sets the entire atmosphere quite nicely. So you start off with the, uh, the journal of sorts here, give you guys the storyline rundown. Three decades ago, in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. That's not important, though. What, what's important is the vast black sea beyond London, a sea which is yours to explore. Now they call it a sea here, but uh, as we go on, you'll see that they've, uh, they've turned it into something else. I'll, I'll make light note of that for now. Uh, it's a 2D game, over the top. You'll see uh, more about that in a second, but for now we have to go ahead and decide who our character is and what we want to become. So we are given the option of a few, you know, starting points which simply give us bonuses to certain statistics that you can see up here. Let's just go ahead and run through these real quick now since they are part of the overlay. This is our health, pretty self-explanatory. Veils improve our speed, stealth, and deception, and we'll get more into that as soon as we get to a combat scenario. Uh, same with pages. Uh, actually, pages is in and of itself uh, built to one fragment of the game that has nothing to do with combat. Uh, increases the speed at which you convert fragments to secrets, but we will detail that in a little while as well. Mirrors improve illumination abilities in combat, another combat statistic we'll get into later. Iron uh, gives you some specific abilities. Uh, you can unlock or use more ab abilities if more efficiently with the use of iron. And then this is just how many crew we have on board our ships. Let's go ahead and, and uh, we'll just take the natural philosopher here. It gives us the bonus to mirrors, which I quite like. And uh, that th you can see now that we've chosen one of the options in the branching path here in the in the journal of sorts. It shows us the rundown of what we got as a result of it. So we've acquired a plausible surgeon advisor who is this snarky little fellow right here. 25 mirrors to a new total of 50, which is very helpful. Uh, we were a natural philosopher. Now you're a Zeke captain, and my stranger quality has left as a result of choosing my identity. Now, what does winning mean to you? There are a few other options available in different builds of the game, and I should specify as well that I downloaded the uh, the early access, you know, press-ish build of the game. There are different builds that you can explore as you go along as well. Uh, you can either go for wealth or fulfillment in this one. We'll go ahead and go for wealth because we all know how greedy I am. Bear greed in the chat, even though the chat doesn't exist right now, damn it! Your ambition quality is now to retire to a life of luxury, which means we need to get rich, goddammit, so let's get going. And uh, finally, the last crap of paperwork, we just want to see how we're addressed, which I'm pretty sure doesn't actually make a difference, so I'm just going to go with Captain, then we'll go with the most dapper-looking man available and rename him as such. And there we go. We finally finished all the uh, prerogative work, and now we get into the game proper. So this is the over-the-top uh, over look that I was talking about before. Uh, we get the pretty much just a map as we're going. We're kind of crawling across the map in our little boat here. To launch, we just simply hit the E button, and then away we go. There's a little help guide as well that actually gives you a pretty nice rundown of everything you can possibly do within the game, but I'll try to do that uh, best as I can myself here as well. You control the boat with the WASD keys. You can go a little bit faster by tapping the W key and uh, giving the engine a bit more power. You can also go to full power, although that does run the risk of some random chance things happening that could potentially uh, damage your ship or kill your crew. So you kind of want to be careful with how frequently you use that option. Now as we venture out here into the Z, you'll see the logbook filling up and we also may encounter creatures such as these as we move forward. The Aurora Megalops! These are the younger form of gargantuan Z crabs, driven up from the spawning grounds in the south by peculiar radiations. Younger they may be, but they are still large enough to consume a pony with messy and clattering glee. That was a nice little rhyme there. Opo is menace to ill-prepared ships as well. 
So this is the uh, this is the giant enemy crab fight that you're used to seeing in the beginning of just about every game these days to introduce into combat. But uh, you can choose to either fight or flee, and your flee chance is dependent upon your veils quality, which we just saw right up here. Speed, stealth, and deception is uh, something that allows us to potentially evade fights. So I could go for that, but I'd instead rather just show you guys what's up with combat. So it gives us a little bit of combat tips here as we go. Essentially, the uh, the combat itself, it reminds me a bit of FTL because, as, as you can see, it starts off paused to give you kind of a, a chance to look at your options and determine what it is that you actually need to do. So it's a very cool little uh, element of this game, combat-wise, is illumination. And what you need to do is get your enemy... Uh, you, you, okay, so it kind of plays into how a battle at sea would actually play out. So, for example... You can't just fire blindly with your salvo into the water because you have no idea where your enemy is. So to spot them and have a better idea of where you need to fire, you either need to seek them out using mirrors, which doesn't really cost you anything but has a pretty uh, long cooldown. You can use flares, which lights up your ship a little bit but would also give you a quicker way to spot the enemy. Or you can use potent flares, which take uh, some fuel and gives you quite a bit of illumination, but also allows you to pretty much see the enemy instantly. I've never actually started off a fight with this, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for this time, although you'll see the uh, enemy usually starts out with Seek, just to try to get your illumination stat up. So we'll see what this does in a moment's time here. So the potent flares work pretty damn well, it gets us up to about 56 illumination already, at which point we're actually able to use the salvo. These things are rendered unusable, uh, well, actually, I don't know if they're rendered unusable, in fact, yeah, okay, cancelled action is not eligible, yeah, so it just tells you, uh, oh, shoot, oh, yeah, I'm being kind of silly here. So now he's illuminated us with that, uh, seek option that he used before. But uh, now that we have 50 illumination, we can actually use the salvo really quick and, uh, be able to do damage, and that should kill this little spider. As you can see, he's only got five life, and that usually doesn't last for too long. So, uh, that's a pretty simple first fight. And now we have the options presented to us after we have emerged victorious. The forlorn and wailing cry, the Megalops turned on its back, and legs neatly folded as bluish blood gouts from its wounds. Its golden glow begins to dim. It's got a really awesome atmosphere to it. The entire game has kind of a Lovecraftian feel to it, although, of course, it's not directly tied to any Lovecraftian lore, but it just has that feeling of, you know, like ethereal mythos and really crazy enemies coming out of the woodwork to try to destroy you. So, we have the options here of either butchering the crab for supplies, we can record observations if we had done so in the combat, and I'll actually try to do that if we run into another crab pretty soon here. Or we can try to dissect it for knowledge, which requires on our pages quality, uh, or requires rather a high pages statistic. Ours is decent at the moment, it presents a modest challenge, so I'll go ahead and try that out, see if we can acquire some fragments as a result of this. You set to work with your knives and acids. It is an undistinguished adolescent specimen, a megalops, of one of the deep sea crab species. But its eyes, normally vestigial in these troglodytic beasts, are large and rather beautiful. The golden glow is almost gone now, although sparks leap now and then to your knife. So we got some fragments and succeeded in a pages challenge, which is awesome. Just one fragment out of that, but it's all well and good. Butchering the animal is pretty useful as well. You can see up here we actually have a hunger statistic. Uh, in regards to the crew we have on board our ship. If we reach this, uh, I guess, line... <laughs> I had a different word for it, but it's gone. If we reach this line, we unfortunately have to use one of the five supplies we have on board the ship to feed the crew. So it usually is within our better interests to try and uh, butcher a couple of enemies and get the crew fed up that way. Uh, we very well may do that by running into this second crab here. I think we can even observe it and butcher it, so let's see if that's indeed the case. Uh, so as you can see here in the miscellaneous tab, there is an option called Observe. Uh, increases both yours and enemy illumination by five and gains observations. Ten observations may earn you something after the battle. So if we want to do that, we can also queue up multiple items in here in the combat, by the way, which is usually uh, very, very beneficial. If we wanted to observe this enemy, that would give us the option to do something more with his corpse after the battle has ended. Uh, the observe statistic, I believe, is a random number between 2 and 4 that you gain every time you observe an enemy, and we're getting pretty lucky here. We've gotten two fours. If we just get a 2 now, it's pretty much guaranteed that we'll get the 10 necessary to um, actually observe the creature as we finish off this fight. Now we have the uh, illumination necessary as well to take out the enemy crablet with a salvo, so we did get the observation as well, so that's very good. See so here, we've gathered at least three observations, so we may now learn something about the uh, about the creature. 
The children of the arthropod phylum are not known for their powers of expression. Nevertheless, something about its behavior as you observed it, the wild abandon of its clicking claws, the merry flip of its shell, suggests not so much pain as abandoned delight. What impulse drives it? We've gained a fragment as a result of that. Now, another thing I want to point out, as you probably realized already, the writing in this game I just think is fantastic. I haven't seen any typos or like grammatical errors yet, and I was a copywriter for a couple of years, so I, I have a, an eye trained for those. And uh, I've been really, really impressed with it thus far. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, it's an American company, Fail Better Games. I don't want to be quoted on that. In fact, we could probably just find that out right now if I can do the uh, do the looking quick enough. We'll see if I can figure that out in a moment's time. But nonetheless, yeah, really impressed with the writing thus far. We can also dissect this as well. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to try to get the crew some food, but nonetheless, those are good to get those fragments early on. Now, what we do with those fragments is um, occasionally we'll be able to speak with our plausible surgeon advisor like so, if we right-click him. And if we have enough fragments that have been turned into a secret, we can unlock new uh, statistical upgrades or, you know, other various perks by way of speaking to our advisor, the surgeon. We also have an advisor that's a ferret. I don't really know what he's for. I think he's just for for, uh, for shits and giggles for the adorable factor of it all. But uh, nonetheless, away we move on. So it's a game about just uh, finding all different kinds of paths, exploring the area, we can actually dock at London, and uh, that was probably a good idea, honestly, to uh, dock at London to try to get a couple of things before we set sail here. But uh, we'll probably head back soon anyway. It's it's kind of scary sometimes. Uh, well, speaking of scary, it literally gets scarier as you go. Your terror increases the longer you stay out at sea. So uh, you do need to be careful about that. Once you uh, get that statistic pretty high up, it does uh, become difficult to... Oh, there's a Dubois Maelstorm as well. Wow. That's pretty awesome. But anyway, yeah, the, ter the terror factor needs to be considered at all times. This guy's chasing me around. I'm going to kind of let him let him come along on the journey here because we're probably just going to go back to London Dock and I can show you guys uh, a few options from there as well. The layout of the map, I believe, is uh, randomized every time you start a new game uh, or at least uh, generated procedurally to a degree. So you're, I am not... Everything I'm seeing right now, you saw that I had a uh, continue option on my menu. I actually had been playing for a couple of hours. I'm really enjoying this game. I'm actually having a really good time with it. It's nice and laid back. It's got a really mellow and, uh, you know, uh, daunting atmosphere to it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I haven't seen anything of what I've seen on this map on my playthrough. So that uh, indicates to me that it, it does quite a good job of uh, presenting you with an entirely new experience every time you play the game. So, pretty awesome in that regard. It's also very easy to die early on, so you got to be careful as you go. In fact, uh, this early dock is more than likely in my better interest, regardless of whether or not I wanted to show you guys what was going on. So, we can collect messages from the Harbor Master now that the Light of London has welcomed us home. Uh, the clatter and song of the dockside is who's the soul. Are there messages for me? So, when we don't have more than 50 terror, we have this option available to us as we dock back in London. We also have to... Uh, do some kind of other criteria here. This, these indicators simply just show you what is necessary to uh, unlock these options if they are locked. So let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, someone wants to sign on to the crew, so we'll have to go to the tavern, I believe, to see uh, who wants on board my ship. And something has changed in the Niath. Your time at Z will change you and London. So we'll have to check that out as we go through London here. Uh, a little gift. Oh, this is a this is an interesting option here. Let's see what happens as we click this little man. Kind of reminds me of the Yogg as well, with the uh, with the story-based, you know, click-and-go options. Behind the blind bruiser on the dock stands a dray piled high with fuel and supplies. Very fun evening to you, Captain. My, what you might call mentor, is very fond of adventurous Zeke captains, and he would like to offer you what we might call a dispensation. I count if he is so fond of Zeke captains. Who is this patron? He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river when is much patronized by sailors and by men of wit and vinegar. A public house, and there is no obligation to speak of. My patron would hope only that you might remember him kindly. And I suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness, then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. Hmm. We can accept the dispensation, of course. Five supplies and ten fuel as a result of that. Very nice. He salutes and is gone, so I wasn't poisoned or killed or anything like that. So it looks, looks like it was, a. Uh, Pretty decent. We can also go to our lodgings and uh, do a few options from here as well. Reading the morning papers, believe it or not, actually does us quite well. It takes away a little bit of terror from our statistic up here, and it also gives us recent news, which is a hot commodity 
in other islands. If you can go to other islands and present them with the facts that are being thrown about in your homestead, you can actually use that as leverage to get certain items from other places. So it's really cool that that's actually a, you know, a uh, well-integrated facet of the game. Uh, rest in a room above the blind helmsman. We can spend 10 Echo, which is their uh, in-game currency. And uh, I believe we have the room above the helmsman as well. So we could do this and reduce our terror and uh, get the restful night bonus as well if we really wanted to. Uh, this is also, writing the Song of the Sea is uh, pretty much your end game goal. You really want to get this done if you want to uh, finish off and uh, call yourself a retired sea captain. We can also go into London. We can check out the uh, whoever wanted to be on the crew. There it is, the a new recruit, a new recruit, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Uh, who waits my attention? I have no idea. Let's see. Captain, are you looking for a gunner? I'm looking for a ship. Here are my references. Here are more references. Here's my design for a whistling shell. Here's my colleague. He'll stay on shore. Here's my hand. Will you take it? We have 20 Echo, and uh, someone is available for hire with no less than a uh, zero times irrepressible cannoneer. So this looks like it would be a, uh, a really nice pickup for us, and it doesn't cost us that much Echo either. Let's look at this one, too. I let me guide your ship. I know all the Z, how it was, how it will be. Please, the headaches only stop when I'm working. So we can unlock a uh, sigil-ridden navigator as well, or we can just simply get a uh, meager crew as well. We can do that after we get these two as well. This guy, uh, he seems a bit too eager, although I think we might be able to afford both of these officers as well. So maybe I can go ahead and pick up the cannon here. Uh, I have no, no more recruits for the moment, but we now gained a... And then, what is this word? An irrepressible. I think that's a, oh yes, it's a synonym for the other thing he's saying down here. Cheery enthusiasm. Beautiful. That's awesome. That's really good. Okay, let's go back to London real fast, see if there's anything else we can do. There's quite a few different things you can do. In fact, going to the Admiralty Survey Office is chief among them. He usually gives you some uh, kind of cool stuff. Uh, let's see here. If there's anything in particular they need, they might have a quest for us. He says, speak to our agent there in return, and he wants us to retrieve strategic information from Guider's Morn in the Corsair Forests east of London. Cool. It's a good way to get... Uh, Kind of some guidance of where it is you really want to be going anyway, so that's good too. So that'll do. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and launch one more time, and then we'll go out and uh, just explore the Z quite a bit more and uh, see what else we have to find out. But yeah, that's the game in a nutshell. This is the uh, this is the gist of it. This is Sunless Sea. Again, it is in early access on Steam. You can go down to the link in the description below and uh, find out more about this one. Soundtrack is awesome as well. I'll turn this up a little bit for you so you guys can uh, enjoy really mellow uh, it, it gives you that it gives you that sense of apprehension quite well it, it, it makes you feel things aren't what they seem there's a mystery there's an underlying uh, feeling of dread as I mentioned before that makes things quite intense as you move along here but yes again this is Sunless Sea it's by Fail Better Games I'm really enjoying it and I think you guys will too thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Indie Spotlight this week my name is Bear and I'll see you next time